meant that uh, 9 was too young, that 16 was too young, 18 was possibly, was, no, it ought to be another couple of years. I hope he finally got saved. But he said he, he got to the point, he just tied up. And that was so sad because he knew he was in a, in a group similar to Sunshine Band here, and he knew what was going on and how, what it was supposed to be. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. my son, in keeping with the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the profession of your faith in him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Satan get in the way. Amen. Because he doesn't want people saved. He likes hypocrites and sinners. Yes. And when anybody fits in one of those, you've got to get out of it. Bless us. We ask it all in Jesus' name and the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let's bow our heads, please. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Father. We come giving praise, praise and thanks, Lord, yes, for Lord. the many blessings that you bestowed on us, Father. Yes, sir. Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, some because we're praying for other people, Father. We're praying for our neighbor. We're praying for our daughters. We're praying for our sons. We are praying for people that are in the hospital that's been struggling with diseases. Well, no matter what they're going through, Father, we want to ask your blessings over them, Father. We want to pray and ask, Father, that your loving kindness be upon us always, Father, and that you never, never, ever desert us or leave us, Father. Father, we come here to tell you this morning, Lord, that no matter what we go through, Father, we're going to still continue to praise you and praise you for everything, for the goodness you've done in our lives, Lord, because no matter how many bad things we have in our lives, we've got twice as many good <coughs> things that happen. If we would just take our time and look around Amen. at the blessings that God has bestowed upon us, Lord, some of us live to see our children. Some of us live to see our grandchildren. Some of us, Lord, don't even get that chance, and we thank you for blessing us, Father. We want to pray, Father, for our neighbors that are not here in Johnson City, Lord, that whatever they may be going through, that your blessings be upon them. Sometimes we struggle with things for a while, Lord, but that's in your time and not ours, Father. And we know, Father, as long as we keep hitting our knees and keep praying, Father God in heaven, that you will answer us, Father. Your time is not like our time. Our time could be a week, uh, two weeks, years. But your time is, Lord, just like a couple of seconds, Father. Father, anything that we need, Father, we ask that your will be done in our lives, Father, and not us, Father. And help us to stay focused on you, Father. Sometimes we struggle, Father. Sometimes we struggle because we want you here, Lord. But, Father, just give us to be patient and kind with us, Lord, and let us give us patience to wait on you, Lord. Give us the patience we need to do your will, Father. And give us the wisdom to think, Lord, if it's anything in our lives that we're holding against somebody, which may be blocking your blessings from us, Father, help us to get rid of it, Lord. If I, if I hold something against this neighbor, this friend, even some people hold grudges against their family members, their sisters and their brothers, Father, I pray, Father God in heaven, if it's anything like that holding us back, Lord, that you remove it, Lord, that you remove it from us, Lord, so that we may be able to enjoy the blessings that you have for us, Lord. And we know, Father, sometimes your blessings come in that we may not be ready for the blessings, Father. But we just continue to wait. We're going to continue to hit our knees. We're going to continue to pray, pray, and pray. Pray without ceasing, which was our theme for last year, Lord. But it's your theme always, Lord, because everywhere in the Bible it says, and they prayed, and they prayed. Paul tells you, pray. We all need to pray, Father, because prayer does work. Prayer does work. If you have a loved one that's been sick and you prayed for and they got better, prayer works, Lord. Father, we want to pray for our young this morning, Lord, our young graduates for the challenges that they face, Father. It's, they have far too many challenges and far too many distractions that we had at the time that we, some of us, graduated, Father. Father, we pray for your protective heads to yes. be around our young, Lord, because Amen. someday they will be need, leading yes. our nation. Someday they will be our preachers. Someday they will be our deacons. Yes. Someday yes. they will be young mothers and fathers, Lord. We want to ask your blessings over them. They will be our choir leaders. Some, some of them will be in the choir, Father. We want to want your blessings to be upon them, Lord, that your protective heads be around them, so Lord, so they can stay strong against the wiles of the devil, because the devil is walking around. He is mad at your people, Lord. He is mad at us because we're standing around this altar, Lord, because we come yes, to sir. you, you, Lord. We're putting our faith in you and not him, and Satan doesn't like that, Lord, and we thank you so much, Father. Father, though we may struggle, we still want to put you first, Father. Father, we want to pray, Lord, for everyone, Lord, for the ones in our hospital. We want to thank you, Lord, for Tanya, Lord, that yes, she wasn't sir. hurt. Seriously, Lord, that, that your blessings was upon her. See what happens when you go to church, when you pray, when you put your faith in God. God will protect you. He'll yes, keep sir. his head around you, Lord. We want to pray for the ones that are going through serious diseases like cancer and that struggled with that, Father. We want, I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you for blessing my cousin, for blessing my brother-in-law, for blessing my blood brother, for blessing all who's been struggling with this yes. cancer, with this prostate cancer. I ask for your blessings over all the young men, yes, Lord. That, Lord. That, when you get the symptoms, go get checked. Go get checked regardless of how the doctor says yes. you are. For women as well, Lord, I want to ask your blessings over them, Lord. If you're not feeling good, go to the doctor. That's what you got the insurance for. Don't just sit and let it wait. Father, we pray for this service this morning, Lord. We pray that we deliver the word, Lord, because some of us need to hear this word, Lord. That's the reason we're in here, Lord. Sometimes we get weak. Sometimes we decide not to go to church or not to hit our knees that day, Father. Give us the wisdom to know that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the only way out. 
We thank you, Lord, for your son, your son who died for us, Lord. Your son, Father, who sacrificed everything for us, Lord. And that's love, Lord. And you want us to have that kind of love. You want us to love others as yes, we sir. have as yes, you sir. have loved the church, Lord. And we need to love. When you love, Lord, your day feels better, Lord. When you forgive, your day goes better. When you read the word, your days go better. When you pray yes. to God, your days are better, Hallelujah. Father. And once you yes, have sir. that hedge around you and that whole armor of God, nothing can happen to you, yes, Father, sir. because God is your protector. We put our faith in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. Heavenly Father, and we want to pray for the remainder of this service that your will be done and all, and we ask for your protections over us as we leave this place, as we travel to and from our homes the next week. Lord, keep us safe to be able to walk in your yes, house next week. Yes. Father, these and all blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and I want to pray your blessings over the young man that's been baptized. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for him. Yes. These and all blessings we ask. Yes, Thank sir. you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. When you, when you get to your pews, remain standing, turn to selection 60. His eye is on the sparrow. And it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Yeah. 
so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me, so I wouldn't let go. I said, oh, let go. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough I could not see. The devil really had me. The scoundrel thought he did, but Jesus, he came and grabbed me, and he helped me come yeah, yeah. so I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me, so I
Shannon, this is a copy of the Word of God and your baptism certificate. Read this every day. You'll be amazed at the peace it will give you. You'll be amazed at the joy. There will be challenges, but God is greater Amen. than anything or anybody that we have to challenge us. And our biggest challenge is Satan and God threw him out of heaven, so we don't have to worry about him, but you've got to stay close to the Lord. May God bless you. Nobody's going to say good morning but one person. Good morning. Okay. Now, the song that you just sung is what the lesson is going to be about this morning, our Father's love. And our Father is Jesus, and he loves us like our real Father should love us. Do y'all agree? You think so? And what, what, this is a special day. What is today? It's Father's Day. Now, I'm just going to kind of give you a little of my personal feelings about Father's Day because some people think that Father's Day is not a big deal. We don't go crazy like we do on Mother's Day. You know, we buy a lot of gifts, we just go loving, and we do a lot of special things for our mother, and that is what we should do because a mother is always there for you. 
But Father's Day is important too. If your father is in your home or not, if he's in your life or he's not in your life, Father's Day is still special. Now, tomorrow is my birthday, but the year that I was born, I was born on Father's Day. So I was my daddy's Father's Day gift. <laughs> so it's special to me. It might not be special to everybody else. And I was spoiled rotten. Any of y'all spoiled? Yes, I love you. I was spoiled rotten, and I married a man who continued the tradition of spoiling me. <laughs> he really has. <laughs> and he's a great father, and I want to wish him a happy Father's Day, and all the fathers a happy Father's Day, because you are important. You, you really, really are important. And so, with that, we'll do our lesson here. Now, what, what is this? Shaving cream? It's shaving cream. It sure is. Now, can this shaving cream do anything if it stays in this can? Yeah. Oh. No. It can't do a thing if it stays in the can. But if we, if I open this can and start squirting it out, what is it used for, really? What is shaving cream used for? Who uses shaving cream? To spread. Okay, it spreads. Okay. Dads use it. Okay, dads use it. And what do they, where do they put it most of the time? Uh, their face. They put it on their face. And what do they do when they put it on their face? Put it on, on their They put it on their face and they use what to, what do they do? What, what does your daddy do when he shaves? He uses he use something. He uses something. <laughs> he uses a razor blade, right? Can you show me how he does it with your hand? You can. Yeah, you can. Uh, kind of demonstrate how they do. Uh, oh. Okay. They do it like this. <laughs> they do it like that, and they shave. And so, they, so when we skirt it out, they put it on their face and they shave. And just like when this can of shaving cream, if the stuff just stays in here, it's not going to do anything. And it's the same thing with our love. If you keep your love in your heart and you don't share it with anybody, it doesn't do anything, does it? It just stays in there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt this shaving cream in here <coughs> to shake it up first. <coughs> and just like this shaving cream comes out and it fills up here, that's what you should do with your love. Get it out of your heart, give it to someone else, share it with someone else until it starts overflowing. It just starts overflowing. And I'm going to stop so we won't make a mess. But just like this shaving cream, right. it can represent love. And the more you let come out, the more love that you let come out of your heart, the better it's going to be. And so what does shaving cream do? When, when they put it on their face, what does it give a man? What does it make it? Why, why do they use it? So they can shave their face without getting cut. Without getting cut, and it makes it smooth it makes it smooth now when you express your love and you give it to other people it's overflowing it's going to make your life a lot smoother too it's going to make it smoother at home at school at church in every part of your life so when you think of shaving cream think of love it's overflowing it makes things smooth for the man's shave Love can make things smooth for us in our life, okay? So what I want you to do today is I want you to find that special man that's in your life. It could be your uncle, your brother. It could be reverend. It could be any man that's special to you. 
and tell them that you love them like a smooth shave. <laughs> He saved this world with his son's life. God must have agonized and grieved to watch his child suffer and bleed. But he knew the blood that his son spilled there would save this world from her despair. So that 2,000 years ago, God put his power in the flow. The sins of this old world could not pollute it. Jesus' blood still washes the blood still cleanses after all these years the blood still has miraculous power So if you need healing for your life, yes. you've tossed and turned and prayed all night, all right, all right. because the doctor said to you that there was nothing he could do. My friend. <laughs> No matter how you feel, keep saying by his stripes I'm healed. That's when the blood will take control and let its healing virtues flow when Jesus' blood is covering you. Every sickness, demon, devil has to move. Jesus' blood still washes the blood, still cleanses after all these years. The blood still.
closer we get home, the more powerful our witness is, the comfort we have is astounding. And we call on the master and see what he's doing. Look around you every now and then. I know people in this room who would have been gone if not for Jesus. God healed them. God healed many of them. But that's the way God does. And too often what we do is we spend a lot of time trying to talk about who doesn't like what you're doing. You better concentrate on God. God is where the power is. It's not with Satan, unless you give him that power. God is awesome. Yes, he is. Ephesians 6, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, promote, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, training our children. You know, whatever you're doing for a living, if you, if, if you have, if you have, if you're in supervisor capacity on your job, you're training somebody's child, a former child, because you're training somebody who grew up through the system. And you notice in this, uh, in Paul writing to the Christians at Ephesus, children, obey your parents. <coughs> too often what we do is not just children, but parents mess up sometimes too. We, we, we back away when God can use us in such a mighty manner. We back off and say, well, I don't know what to do. Uh, and, uh, keep, children, let me tell you something. Just keep on praying. Keep on calling on the master. And when it looks like it's impossible, pray some more. And when it looks like it's impossible, pray some more. And what will happen to you is suddenly you'll look around and think, whoa. And the first thing you'll say is four words, I don't believe it or I can't believe it. You're not saying that you didn't believe God could do it. You just didn't think you were worth all that. And, but you have just, just a great sense of, of, of honor great for him and, 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 a, and a great sense of, of, of love for him. I don't know about you, but this has been a marvelous worship. Yes. Ooh, I feel great. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Marvelous worship. But that's not unusual. And we're bragging on God. We're not bragging on ourselves. And we find out when we do that, when we, children, though you look at children, you think of the little ones, they're so cute. They're going to be grown one day. And, and, and I want to share something with you on that too. Be careful. Be careful. Because you can become a means to an end. And there's not much pity for men at means to an end. You, you can help your children, we all do. But you know, if, if you're too quick with it, one day it's gonna be more than you can do. And your own child or grandchild might take you out. It's happening every day. Cause, and every time I see one of those situations, I tell whoever's talking to me, whoever, maybe watching TV or whatever, seeing in the paper, say, look man, they became a means to an end. People say, I love my car, that's just when it's driving. When, I, when, it's, when it's moving along. The Lord also knows what y'all call in them cars when they stop too. But anyway, but you know that's what happens. We say, oh, this is a great car. It's all based upon performance. It's all based upon what the car is going to do to make me happy. That's why I love the car. If the car ain't running right, I don't care. Get rid of it, get another one. Haven't you seen that happen? 
we, we look at Father's Day, we looked at Mother's Day this year, and, 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 and think about that. There are people who make themselves means to an end. What they do is all, they're always there. There's not, nothing wrong with being there to help your family. But the thing is, you've got to have some reasonableness about this. You have to come to that point that you say, wait a minute, I can't, can't do all that. Do it young, while they're young. We, we had little toys that we loved to play with when I was growing up, and we had different things that, were, had, that had more value. And so our parents taught us, this has more value. Don't, don't take it out there thrown around the yard. The, the ball is out in the yard. And of course, uh, if, you, if you broke the rule, you never forgot uh, what happens when the rule got broken. You thought you were getting broken too, but, <laughs> but the thing was, and they tell you, said, look, okay, here's, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take away privileges for a little while. Don't come in somebody you've never disciplined before in your life, uh, and grandchild, child, great-grandchild, and you come in and go, put them on two weeks without this and two, no, no. You gotta build toward that. When what happens is you say, no, if you do this, my mom was good at it. If you do this, God, I still talk about cap guns so much because they were so much fun. <laughs> and I could always look around the room and I can always so tell the people who played with them. And <laughs> cause you smile. But that was the first thing they took away cause we got a, had, we got a kick out of that. We have six of us, three cap guns on one side, three on the other. Nothing coming from it, no pellets, nothing, nothing like that. It was just noise off that little piece of paper. But you know what? We loved doing it. And if mom looked at us and said, now, okay, you, it's time to get in that garden. I don't want you up there at, from 12 to two because that's hot. It's real hot at that time of day. And you fool around. And she'd come out and say it again. Then you do it the third time, and she calls you to the back porch and says, yes, what are we going to do? You're not playing with the cap gun for two weeks. And I never forget one of my brothers hollered to us, hey, y'all, we ain't playing with cap guns for another two weeks. She says, oh, no, you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> they are. My mom did not have a degree, but she understood child psychology real well. So I <laughs> said, they are going to play all they want to and I better not see your little hands, grubby little hands when she was angry, <laughs> on them. <laughs> and you know, we said, and what we do sometimes, she tell us, she said, we gotta teach your brother a lesson. So what you do is go out there and play something. They play and she'd fuss, he'd fuss a little bit, we'd, we'd be out there just playing. But the thing was, you know, those things were not repeated. Those deals were not repeated. But if she says no or else, we knew mama meant no or else. And she wasn't playing, and she wasn't going to change. You can cry all you want. You know, you know how little children they, uh, have this thing. They go, you see them in the grocery store somewhere with, with the mom and dad, and just scream and not a tear. My dad always had a, yeah, he said, I'm going to cure this. Because, <laughs> see, you, you're up here wasting noise, and all that water is still inside you. So when I go out there and get that switch, if you haven't shut your mouth and stopped that hollering when I get back, then I'll give you something to cry for, and what will happen is it'll hurt for a little while, and I'll watch it from that point on to see when I can get a chance to do it again. I don't want to do it, but you're making it that way. Uh, that was the first and last thing, too, if you got caught for that. But see, the thing is, God wants us to do it His way. Look what it says, obey, children, obey your parents in the Lord. With love, you tell children to obey your parents. Do it because not only they're right, but you love them, and you want to make their lives better. I've known kids to mom and dad buy them a little car because somebody else had a bigger one or whatever they didn't want to be bothered with, and they'd, they'd wreck it. I said, well, the insurance is going to pay for them, but it doesn't pay at all. But that's when you have become a means to an end. I said, in the Lord, children, obey your parents the way God wants it done. Him first, God first, and, and treat them the way you ought to. And he said, he, Paul said, for this is right. There's no option on it. I don't know about you, but I, we, we all have one, one father, and that's God. And you know something about it? We know what he likes and what he doesn't. And some of us will get just out of it enough to say, I don't care what God, nobody else say. Well, that's a dangerous thing. You can have a big funeral. And uh, they say, well, I'll do what I want to. 
It's not long before something happens to awaken them. I want to share something with you. Do you know that when you upset God, wrath comes? He's not, he's not just a nice uh, elderly gentleman sitting there on a little rocking chair waiting to go and do this and do it. No, 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 he's, he's not playing. And then what we have to keep in mind is that we have to call on him, and when we call on him, do what he says. We're his children. Didn't you like it when your children ask you and, and when they thank you for what you've done? God likes that too. We are his children, whatever it is. And God will bless us if we are willing to be obedient to him. And when we do that, we find that say, you, you, you find a joy. I don't know, it's hard to describe it. it it's just a wonderful joy inside of you. And, and, and in the process, you look at it and you think to yourself, man, look what has happened. Obey your parents in the Lord. This came from God. Obey your parents. He knew if he got you obeying your parents, there won't be any problem obeying him. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Honor. Now, you may not respond to, to mom and dad like you did when you were six years old because you're grown now, but the respect is there. The respect is there. And I'll tell you something else, too. Be cautious of some things. If, if you have a relative, and I'm not going to ask anybody who does, that's your business. If you have a relative, or whether it's mom, dad, or whoever, and they're living with you, and it's stressful, and it's trouble, please don't hurt their feelings. Do you realize that they don't really, if they, like most people, they don't want to have somebody wait on them hand and foot. They want to be able to do some things, too. Sometimes people say, well, I, 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 they come, I told them what we were going to have for, for, for dinner, and they said they didn't have a taste for it. And I, cause I know somebody asked me that one time when my mom was staying with us. She said, what do you do if your mom says she didn't have a taste for that? I said, we'd ask her, what do you want, honey? Do you want, that? Do you want this or this? But she, she tickled me. She told us right quick. She, and I, I told my wife, I said, you know, she's not kidding you. She, she'll, we'll come in, my wife will have cooked, and mom said, I can't believe it. That's what I was thinking about. It was. It was. And, and, and we, I doubted it at first, but then it, it was too smooth. I said, no, she, she's right. She was really thinking about that. But you know, it's, it's good to care, to care enough to help somebody else. In Exodus 20, 12, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God gives me, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. You're going to live there. Just put your hand in his hand. I, don't know, I know I say that a lot, but it's so important. When you put your hand in somebody's hand, it's trust, care, comfort, encouragement, this kind of courage that you cannot imagine because you know that you put your hand in God's hand. But listen, I want, uh, keep this in mind too. Your children, your children sometimes have a picture of the world that is not there. They think that if I just say I don't want to do this, I don't have to do it. And there's sometimes in some situations I've seen children do that. They say they don't want to do it, and the teacher tells them. That I worked in elementary school. And the teacher says, oh, go ahead. And somebody else might say to that teacher a little later on, say, well, you know, that's not going to help the child with this, with this test we got to come. And the person look at them and say, I don't care, I'm tired of fooling with them. They don't, they don't study. I, I just let them take the test without studying, see what happens. But the child thinks that the teacher is taking care of me because I don't have to do it. I can do what I want to. God will bless you in spite of everything you face. Yes, sir. Ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord your fathers. Do you, you know, I, I, one fellow made a powerful statement about that. And, uh, he says, you're telling your child that he or she 
needs to calm down while you scream. They wonder when you're going to calm down. And you tell them that I don't want to hear all this mess. I ain't listening to it. I don't care what you think. And show some concern. See, it doesn't mean that you're, you're giving up on, on the thing that you care about that you want them to learn how to do. It simply means that you've approached it from a little bit different direction. And when that happens, you find yourself seeing wonderful things. And you see, you have a child that you come in in the evening or whenever, and they're, they're sitting there doing homework, and they come to you and say, look what I did, look what I did, Mama, look what I did. Dad. Get, get excited with them. Get excited with them and watch them soar. What does God do with us? When God, we pray and God blesses us and he blesses us so awesome that we're just excited. I've been there so many times, so excited about what he's doing for you. And you're just standing there like I said, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What a joy you have, what peace you have because you know that God cares about you. You know that God has blessed you. You know that God has given you the opportunity to do some things that you never thought you would. You know that God has lifted you up, and, and you, you know that you, you, even though you couldn't do it before, you, you can now. And God has given you power like you never knew you had because God's the one who's got it, and he led it to you for a little while. And God has said, go on. You can do it. You can do it. One of the saddest things in the world is to hear somebody with potential and everything else and they will spend more time they'll be talking to you talking you're talking to them you may be that kind of person and you haven't said one positive thing at all <laughs> nothing positive attitude plays off it pays off and and I've, I've seen people do that and their hearts are broken and, and and you finally have to come to that point of saying listen give yourself some credit you're intelligent you can do it. I don't know. No, no. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I've had students to sit in a chair across from me and cry, grown people, because they couldn't get it. And I said, well, how hard did you try? Huh? How hard did you try? I, I could do it if I want. Okay, let's want to for a while. Just let's, let's do it. Here's the process. It's the thing we have called SQ3R. It's fantastic. So just, just go right straight through there. Now pick up, tell me, and write down some notes all the way. And the person does it. You're over working with somebody else and then you hear, you hear them from across the room go, wow! You know what happened right then, they got it. They got it. And when you watch them walk across that stage, and sometimes after commencement's over and they come and grab you and hug you after this, oh, oh how I really appreciate you, you helping me like you do. Well, we are God's children. We're not supposed to be sticking people in the back, stabbing them in the back and hurting them. We ought to be trying to help them make it. Just, and, and we talk, when we talk about training God's children, we're talking about God's children in the, in the, out in the field where you're working, whatever it is. Train them. Teach them to know what they need to know. And then you look at them a little bit later and they come and stop you on the street sometime and, and tell you, oh, how wonderful. I couldn't believe it. I thought you were tricking me like I had most of the other time. But, but you're not. I said, you weren't. I said, no, I care. I want you to pass. I don't want you to fail. But I can't give you a grade you, doesn't, you don't earn because you, it's, it's not worth anything to you. It's not going to help you. Children, look why God blesses us. He blesses us. He enhances and increases our faith in him. And when we call on him, we expect something positive to happen. Yeah. Now, if it doesn't, we say it's going to happen later. But we expect it to happen because we believe in God with the whole heart. We cry out sometime in the midst of our challenges and cry out because we were struggling with so many things. But I want to tell you something. The thing that's so beautiful with this situation is when you look around sometime and look back over your shoulder, and see how far you come. I don't know. I, that's right. That's right. You look at it and you, you think sometimes you, you've always had somebody in your life, relatives, teacher or whatever, who kept telling you you couldn't and you were believing them and then finally you decided, wait a minute, that's my life. You're telling me how to live my life. I can't let you do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to succeed. And then when you succeed, that same person comes to you and says, I knew if I messed with you long enough, you'd do it. <laughs> 
And he said, what? He said, yeah, because I knew you could do it. But everybody else was telling you you could and, and, and listening to you whine and argue. Next thing, are you depressed? Ask God's help. Yes. Ask God's help. God can help you. He can cheer you up right now. How do you feel? Do, do you feel that, that sense of belonging? Or do you say, nobody loves me? You ain't that important that nobody loves you. Some people just don't care about nobody. <laughs> so don't, so don't, don't use that. But what you want to do, you want to be a person that will try what God gives them the ability to do. And when, when you do it, it's amazing. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden you turn around and you say, well, man, this, this, is, this is almost unbelievable. Stop, don't even say it again. Just say, look what God did for me. Look what God did for me. Look how far he's brought me. Look how far I've come. And when all of a sudden you look around and you go, wow, thank you, God. And, and you know what else? This, you know, if, if you're in reading that chapter, he talks about even people, how they carry themselves at work. They said, as unto the Lord, that's what Paul was saying. What he was saying was, as unto the Lord, meant you give it everything you've got. If you're going to, you know, think about this, you're going to be there for eight hours, right? And you want to quit the job because they ask you to do two other things that's in that eight-hour period. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find a nice way to say this. <laughs> uh, how interesting can you be? Uh, how... No, I don't want to call you stupid, it's too many. <laughs> Let's pretend we're talking to somebody else, okay? <laughs> My dad took us on the front porch for, for front porch talks a lot, and he would, he let you go ahead. And then he'd tell you, he said, now, you know, son, uh, I am so proud of you in so many ways. And, and if you were just messing up, he said, why are you doing that? Then, and most of the time with children, it's another child encouraging them to do wrong. And all we had to do was mention the name, and then he to, he'd give us a history. He said, that child's parents have never accomplished anything. He's going to flunk. He'll be, a, he'll be a bootlegger. We didn't have enough money to have drugs. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but he, he, he's become a junkie. Okay. But what, what happens after he does? He looks at you, he says, do you realize this is your life? Not Billy's. Not Mary's. Your life that you're letting somebody else tinker with. You, you, I tell you, you want, want to know another thing that help to make a difference? Learn to say, I can. You don't have to be telling nobody but yourself. Learn to say, I know I can do this. I know I can. God's going to help me do it and ask him. And when he does, thank him. Thank him for the help he gives, because we are his children. He loves us. He wants to help us. And when he helps us, he shouldn't find us as people standing around saying they don't care. But I don't know about you. Think about it. Think about it. What do you want to achieve? What degree do you want to get in college? We get out of elementary school, uh, high school, go, go to a, a community college, and then go to the full thing and, and end up with a PhD or something like that. You can do it if you really want to. If you really want to. It's like if you cheat on a test, you didn't hurt the teacher. You passed the test without even studying. The teacher got credit for you passing. And yet, you still don't know it. When God saves your soul, live like it. When God saves your soul, talk like it. When God saves your soul, tell somebody, this is what God has done in my life and you will find a joy in your soul that's astounding. Tell the world, tell them, look, God will do this. God will bless you. God will do all kinds of wonderful things for you if you're just willing to obey him day by day and moment by moment and watch what will happen. And when you obey him, you'll find yourself saying, man, I can't hardly believe it. This is fantastic. Look what God has done. You, you may be at a stage in life now. You may be in your 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever. You might say it's too late. It's never too late to change.
change. It is never too late to turn from wrong to right. It is never too late to, 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 to get to that point at which you can accomplish things. It's never too late to stop whining. Whining ain't never done nothing but put snot on your face. Because you, you can't sniff, you can't sniff it in fast enough and it's coming out. That's all it's going to do. And that's not really what you want to need. But the thing you want to keep in mind is that when God is there, when God is there, when God blesses you and a little tear comes, it's a beautiful little tear. But, but you see what we do? We go, if, if I could only do this. Don't, no, no, no. You've got to do it. Do you know what society, what society we're living in now? If you come out of whatever, high school, college, whatever, if you don't have a degree in something or certification in something, I don't know what you're going to do. But see, you, you know how we like to do it. Hey, man, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know why you, get, you don't like, but it, we'll go with it. You know, like, I, I, I think uh, I, 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 I do the work I want to do. That's all I need. How do you know? You haven't been out there yet. Do the work. Give it everything you've got. And in your life with God, give it all you got. Everything. I, I sometimes, I, I was telling somebody yesterday, sometimes I have people who call me on the telephone, they're here at the choir. And they say it sound like 60 to 100 people. I said, no. What do you do? How, how do you do that? I said, they all sing. <laughs> See, when, when you got a real grip, a lot of times people are going, <laughs> they, they're lip syncing. But the thing is, give God. Give God the flow. Don't let anybody else use you. Ask God's help and live by it. Keep walking. Keep walking. And one day, one day, you're going to get those degrees. One day, you're going to get that certification. One day, you're going to be able to live the life that you wanted to. And I know how we all want.